Howdy folks, thank you very much for tuning in. As always, if it's the first time watching our channel or you're a regular viewer, don't forget to give us a, a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It's interactions like that that helps keep our channel high up in the YouTube rankings. And also, just as important, and if not more importantly, it's customers that visit our website uh, and our Optics Weekends that means that this channel can continue. So. Today we're going to have a quick look at the, the Viking Peregrine 10x42 binoculars. Um, currently the highest end but there is some new models coming out very shortly and as by the time you've watched this video who knows maybe it's out and uh, more on that to come when they're available. So before we get into the binoculars too much we'll just have a quick look at what you get with it. So we have the nice standard white case here that you get with most Viking binoculars now. Uh, a nylon case, It's uh, there's, there's no strap to it but it does have the uh, belt loop there, very good quality and uh, just the velcro fastener there. Then coming on to the accessories, uh, a enclosed microfiber clean cloth there and then looking at the lens caps I, I could say as per usual the, the normal drop down or all in one uh, eye cups here but they are definitely of a higher grade than the other Viking binoculars as is the padded neck strap very very good quality uh, it's a step up from let's say that things like the Kestrels in uh, construction here very nice padded strap there so back on to the binoculars first thing you'll notice as soon as you take them out of the box, boy these are light. But considering these are metal eye cups, uh, fittings, I mean uh, magnesium alloy body, they're 610 grams and it's that's ridiculously lightweight. I don't know how they do it and I was just doing an earlier comparison with the Viking Merlins, also another fantastic set of binoculars, and going from them, what you call standard weight, and then going on to these, it was almost like somebody switched on an image stabiliser. It's really easy to keep the image steady and I know a lot of our customers, that they do struggle with unsteady hands and you really, you know, either these or the eight times are uh, ideal for holding steady. A nice uh, smooth body but it does still grips really nicely. The strap connectors here they don't touch the inside of your hands at all so they're nicely well positioned a silky smooth focuser as per pretty much all of the Viking binoculars and so a combination of that and the lightweight uh, buddy means it's very very easy to use single handed if you're out walking uh, with somebody or you're walking the dog and you've just got one hand free no problem at all with single use uh, single handed use here Eye relief, I think it's quoted as around about 18 millimeters, but but I pref personally I prefer them either one stop in or or two stops in. Uh, it, you know, because I found if you had them all the way out, you couldn't quite get the full field of view. The next person along that tries these might uh, disagree with that and find yet yeah, they're fine all the way out. But whatever, the, there's a different setting. There's like one, two. Three. So you'll find your own level. And while they're out, let's just test the the eye cups here with the push test. So I'm going to push in. Yep, yeah, that's nicely staying in place. And again, pushing in, not twisting. Just a slight bit of movement, but are you really going to push them up against your eyes that much? So that's about the handling and the uh, eye relief. And by the way, there is plenty of eye relief if you wear spectacles and you have the cups down. Plenty of eye relief there. Close focus on these is around about two meters. I did test that and that, that's pretty accurate if you like looking at your bugs and butterflies. So what about the view through the eyepiece? Well I, I did actually test these against a set of Merlins which again are a cracking set of binoculars. Uh, for that uh, difference in price 50 or so pounds it will vary depending on dealer. I found 
slightly brighter image with these unless that was just my brain telling me that it was brighter but there was a noticeable wider field of view there was less chromatic aberration on the edge and certainly um, much straighter edges less pin cushion distortion much, le much less in fact it's hardly noticeable compared to the Merlins but I'm, I'm in danger of turning this into a Merlin versus Peregrine shoot out here but uh, just just a, f a few things there that you, know, you pay the extra and so you get that little bit brighter image bit brighter view less chromatic aberration and less pin cushion distortion the image is very clear and bright lovely contrast uh, I mentioned the chromatic chromatic aberration you know that these are not apochromatic so even with a set like this you, you are going to notice some but but only in like the five percent of views when you're looking at extremely high contrast subjects like maybe a bird sat on the top of a chimney top as I've mentioned before or in heavily very heavily backlit trees but uh, just a slight bit of a purple colour fringe you know, on the on the edges of the branches but most people are not even going to notice it and for 95 percent of the views there is no chromatic aberration whatsoever it's only those very very high contrast subjects uh, very very stylish uh, binoculars and, and I found with these you could look through them for quite a long time and they're very easy on the eyes and what I mean by that is you know you look at something for a long time and you you, you, you pull the binoculars away from your eyes and you just it just takes your eyes a, a second or so just to readjust I found I didn't get any of that with these, so you, very, very good if you like looking at things uh, for, for a long time. And factor of that in with the ease of use, the smooth focuser and the lightweight body, then yes, these are very, what you call, user-friendly. And uh, if, if you're out on long walks especially. Testing these in low light, very, very good. Uh, look, look, looking into the shadows, there's a lot of detail. Obviously, the the eight times forty two would be that slightly uh, be a little bit better, but but overall a, a good set of binoculars in in all conditions. So w when you think about it, uh, not much over three hundred pounds. You, you do definitely get uh, quite a lot of specification for your money against other brands. You, know, you pay your money and you take your choice, and that's why at our optics weekends people can come look through these. They can look through other brands. And whichever what suits me may not suit the next person or, or vice versa and that's uh, why I love to see people at our optics weekends and uh, I do thank you very much uh, for popping along uh, including somebody just a couple of weekends back said they saw my YouTube channel and thought they'd come along it is very much appreciated so that, that's a quick look at the the Viking Peregrine 10 times 42 binoculars available from the link in the description below if you want to support our channel feel free to ask away if you've got any questions really nice set of binoculars for the you know you call it like a mid-price uh, binocular uh, I look forward uh, maybe by the time you've seen this video there will be a new model coming out and uh, who knows uh, probably a, a review to follow so thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time